past the hour. It is the Jeff Santo Show that you are tuned into, coming to you live from the South Coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's uh, the end of the week, folks. And, um, of course, uh, our last segment, uh, we saved the best for last. Our good friend, the renaissance man of the Jeff Santo Show. He, of course, is the uh, executive director of Democracy Watch News. He is uh, our friend, MTC, and he joins us from the 206 in Seattle, WA. And here he is with his guitar. Uh, hello, MTC. You saw me down the river, you don't want me anymore. Yeah, you saw me down the river, and there's a battle to the shore. Yeah, you saw me down the river, cause you don't want me loving anymore. My God, Elvis is in the house. There you go. You get hey, some Jeff. Memphis blues going on, are you? Hey, I love the blues that you've been playing on your program as, as bumper music. I don't know who that is, but I want to pick up that track. Um, but that song is called Sold Me Down the River. It's now available on Spotify and Apple Music and TikTok and YouTube and all over the place because I got to deal with TuneCore. Way to go, way to go. We're distributing that song out there. So more to come in that area. It's, it's been a crazy week, Jeff. Hey, is I'm that a new guitar, here. by the way? I haven't seen that one before. Very, very cool. I have played this once before when I when I did this song. Uh, that song is kind of for the Republicans in the in the house. But I did <laughs> use this song once before when I sang about Trump. When I when I said, uh, "Mr. Boss Man," yeah, that's <laughs> don't right. you yeah. hear us when we call? I said, "You ain't so big now. You just talk. That's all." Yeah. Oh, yeah, the boss man. Well, <laughs> yeah, the boss man, uh, you know, uh, has um, has a lot of warts. I can tell you that. Yeah. Um, hey, I want to I want to get to um, uh, a lot of things with you, particularly David Crosby and the and the death of the great uh, musician, uh, songwriter, and and political activist. Um, but I um, I must tell you, I read something yesterday. I know we haven't had a chance to talk about this, so I'm not surprising you because I, I, I just came across this last night, but the retirement or impending retirement of Ms. Sawant um, from the city council and what I read yesterday, um, and what is the latest on that? Because I know that you're relatively close with her. Uh, I read an article that was not, you know, very um, welcoming to her colleague in crime, uh, Ms. Jayapal. What is the latest going on there, Mark? Well, she says, you know, that she she wants to retire. She's not going to seek re-election for her seat on the city council. And I'm kind of shocked by that. But considering what I know yeah. about her, I assume that she has other plans. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she decides to run for another office. So we're, we're going to wait and see. I asked uh, one of her, her, the people that, you know, has been supporting her for years, and he was you know he had his he, he yeah. was closed mouth he didn't want to tell me too much she has in mind but i it's i'm assuming it's going to be something very interesting because i cannot see her just going away as you know as who was well, it, i guess uh, it's the mayor position that would be the one that i would think right and i don't know when you guys do your mayor's race but that would be the most likely one right that would be incredible to have a mayor like shama sawant for seattle of course we will miss her on the city council because she's the only city council member who has been so uh, such an activist and such a, a spokesperson for the working class and for for poor people in this uh, city so i hope that they find someone to run in her place that is at least you know somewhat uh, as progressive and uh, alternative minded as she is because the the people who are struggling in this town, I mean, I, we've been talking about the Seattle Initiative 135. Jeff, some of the new apartments in Seattle are rented for $5,000 a month. That's insane. This is crazy. I mean, it's, you know, it's New York, you know, San Francisco prices. So we need someone like you this. about rent control, which we definitely need in this city. Right. So, uh, you know, I could see her as the, the mayor for rent control. That would be great. And maybe she could adopt... You know, the slogan from the, the candidate in New York, the rents are too damn high because when it comes to $5,000 a month, when most people in the city are not working high tech jobs or, you know, biomed, they're actually working food service and clerical and retail jobs near minimum wage. There's no way to sustain that kind of uh, uh, economy in this city. 
So I'm hoping. Well, what that about she the will... Starbucks workers? I mean, if you're working in the city and going to school part time, you know, and all the great universities there in Seattle, I mean, you know, how are you going to how are you going to have, you know, 15 people in a house? I mean, you know, what what is this? I mean, it's insane. Let me ask yeah. you this. And I don't know if you can uh, top of your head. But I mean, the people who let Bezos get all the free uh, land that he has taken over in Seattle. I mean, those are people should be really held, uh, you know, responsible for this this BS. Because the mayor and the, presumably the governors in the past too, you know, must have given away, you know, tremendous amount of real estate uh, to, to Bezos and uh, for all those offices. And then on top of that, the people who are the developers to build all those apartments, you know, next door. I mean, they're not the only city. I mean, we've done it here in Boston, you know, New York. I mean, I remember my friends, you know, who were involved in the uh, music industry in Soho and places like that. You know, they were wiped out, they, all the local uh, music stores and stuff, all out because people bought into, uh, you know, the high-end, um, you know, Neiman markup kind of uh, stores going into uh, Soho and places and so on. And this is what has happened, and it's happening everywhere. But Seattle is a place that, you know, has, has pushed back on a lot of the, um, you know, neoliberal viewpoints that has dominated the Democratic Party that we just talked about. But, I mean, I don't know if, if anybody... Uh, you know, is, is um, you know, uh, responsible, but probably like the last four or five mayors, you know, uh, come to mind. Yeah, I mean, so she can they, run they against always, those folks. They're always running as progressives saying that everyone in Seattle has a right to a place to live. And then once they get into office, they get bought off by the developers and the huge corporations. Yeah. My favorite uh, music store, the three, which had a f over $3 million inventory, just walls and walls of guitars jeff it was my favorite place to go two blocks from where i live is now a google uh development you know multi-billion dollar google development and they told me they said you know we're a guitar center we have stores all across the country and we're like little fish in this pond i mean google just came in and and bought them out there was nothing they could do so yeah we've seen that over and over again so the only response that i've seen lately is this initiative 135 because it doesn't rely on jeff bezos to do the right thing it doesn't rely on Microsoft or Boeing or, or Google or any of these other companies here, what it does is it just, it tells the people that we are going to invest. The city has property that it owns that could be used to house people. And we need labor unions involved and we need all these activist groups to get involved. And we need management uh, of these places by the tenants so that it doesn't turn out to be some top down hierarchical structure. I mean, that's the only alternative I can see, Jeff. And it's happened in other cities and other countries. You know, there. if you go to the, the website, howsourneighbors.org, which is the Yes on uh, I-135 website here, they talk about uh, cities in Austria and France, even Uruguay and Canada, where housing is considered a public good, which is something that Bernie Sanders was saying here, God, I don't know, 20 years ago when he came to Seattle, at the behest of another city council member at that time um, to talk about uh, housing as a right. And he was trying to push that in Burlington, Vermont, where he became mayor. So we need to see that here. And if, if Shama Sawant can become mayor of Seattle, we might get some progress, but we've also got some programs coming from folks like Frank Chop, who's another great housing activist in our state legislature. And even Governor Inslee's talking about, you know, uh, housing people and the higher rents in, in Washington state. So I think it's finally, uh, the the politicians have finally got a clue after how long, and they finally realized after doing these surveys that the top two priorities amongst voters in Washington state is high rents and homelessness. So we got to do something about it. It might as well start here. I'm tired of seeing these homeless encampments all across the country in all the major cities. And as I always said, if they were on an international border, they would qualify for assistance from the Red Cross and the United Nations. But because yeah, they're there under you go. some an <laughs> You're not far. Law, North. What are you, you? You're an hour and a half from from uh, the Canadian border where you are in in in, uh, in, in to 206 there in Seattle. I mean, not far. I mean, I've driven. I've driven to Vancouver when I lived in when I spent time in Seattle. I cannot think of one major political leader in Washington D.C. outside of a few members of Congress like Pramila Jaipal who even talk about homelessness as an issue in this country. They're too busy fighting their petty. Party battles. Uh, they want they want the real the real estate developers, you know, who are giving them campaign dollars, you know, back home, yeah. and it's it's a tragedy. It really is. Hey, I want to I want to get back to this article uh, that our good friend uh, Stephen in California sent to me. 
on Sawant. There's two things that I'm worried about for her perspective, not so much about her career. She doesn't seem a person that's career focused, but she doesn't, uh, she takes a, a real dig at AOC and talks about the squad and, you know, doing more. I thought that was really a, a, a cheap shot and B, not smart politically. Number two, she also in this article talks about the fact that, uh, you know, that Jayapal and the Progressive Caucus hasn't done enough. Now, I don't necessarily disagree with those assumptions, but to, to actually put it in print I don't think that's smart. And I'm wondering what you're hearing, because I know you have a great relationship with the Jayapal folks when they see this kind of article, um, whether or not, you know, there is already tension there. Because my view, as much as I love, you know, people's spirit in the DSA and so forth, and she criticized the Democratic Socialists of America as well in that piece, I'm like, you're putting yourself on an island. Now, if you want to run for mayor and you can do that and you can win, all more power to you. But it's not the way to kind of bring people together. And I'm wondering, you know, if that is at all, you know, if this article um, is at all backfired and, and uh, potentially it could, I mean, it's only been out, I guess, 48 hours or so, but your thoughts on that, Mark, because I hate to see her, you know, go off, you know, the deep end because she has some incredible um, talent, you know, to withstand the pressure from Bezos and all the money that they poured in to defeat her. You know, and she's going to need allies. So I'm hoping that, you know, maybe it was a misquote or something. But your thoughts on that? I think that she's sorely disappointed in the Democratic Party. So she may be yeah. looking oh, to join the People's Party. Uh, she's already a member of the Socialist no, Alternative that's Party. That's a disaster, I think. So, so I think that she is just fed up with the Democrats. And this is her way of speaking out. And I think... If she if she's not a city council member, I think she feels like she's um, she'll be more uh, she'll be allowed more freedom to speak out in this more radical way. Now, whether it's a smart political move or not, I'm not so sure either, because she is a alienating some of her allies in the Democratic Party. And I'm hoping that somehow, you know, coalitions can come together, including progressive Democrats. You know, I've worked with progressive Democrats of America, so I, I know that there are some good people in the De Democratic Party. I've always been a supporter of Bernie Sanders. You know, considering the alternatives, AOC is like uh, a shining angel. So, yeah, I, right. I don't necessarily exactly. agree with everything. Not perfect said. by any stretch, but, you know, but and, and, you know, but she's also 32 years team. of age. So, I mean, you know, give her a break. She was at a bartender less than 10 years ago. Uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 hard for me to criticize her. Uh, you know, when, when she's trying to make her way and, and you know, you know pe people out ready to try to kill her as well, um, you know, on top of that. So, Obviously, you know, I mean, it, it's, 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 she wants to light a fire under the Democratic Party, hoping that it will change some and move some people in the right direction. Whether she ends up burning her bridges or not, we'll, we'll see. She is one of those yeah. politicos who just continually comes back, you know, and they never seem to be able to defeat, defeat her as long as she has grassroots support, at least in this city, she may be able to win without the major Democratic Party support. But in you know, in she terms might. of running for she Congress might. or Senate, I'm not so sure. You know that. Uh, I don't think she has a future in Washington. I, I don't. But you know, she could look. I mean, if she could figure a way, you know, to bring in a a coalition um, to win her the mayoralty, then she because she'll be in the biggest city, uh, you know, then she's a, pan a candidate for governor. So you could go that track and avoid Washington her entire life, uh, you know. Um, so, I mean, but she has to be able to build something that is more than just the DSA. I mean, you know, you're not going to you're not going to be able to win over uh, people who think of a socialist as some kind of, you know, foreigner. I mean, again, a lot of younger people understand the differences between, you know, Bernie Sanders, DSA and Stalin. But there are a lot of people who you know, don't know anything about politics either. So, but I want to, I want to bring in our good friend, John in Minneapolis, because not only does he understand this, but he is represented by Ms. Omar, who of course the Democrats as a whole have tried to defeat, even when she's an incumbent. And maybe there's some similarities here. Again, Omar is in Congress. She has actually been a target of Ms. Sawant in the sense of the progressive caucus. She's number two to Jayapal. And then, and let's see if John has anything to say in this. John, you're next with Mark Taylor Canfield. Go right ahead, sir. John in Minnesota. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that uh, once a person uh, gets in power, 
they do kind of move um, to where, you know, they move more towards the center than they would if they, you know, like, for instance, if Omar was in the city council, she could afford to represent, you know, one area of the city and be, you know, a lot more, I would say, uh, you know, to the left. It's just a problem of our our uh, politics, which is so conservative and so yanked to the right that it's almost impossible, especially if you get to the center of power, which is is Washington, D.C., to not move, you know, move away. I mean, you really have to make a concerted effort uh, not to feel that kind of pressure, uh, you know, to compromise. But I think that some, you know, some politicians like Sawant and Bernie Sanders are very idealistic and they just stick with it. Uh, Sawant, yeah. from what I understand, she was raised as a socialist. So, you know, she understands what, what that means. And, uh, you know, it was a very popular stance in, uh, in the 60s, 70s, you know, with Gandhi, there was coalitions of socialists, Marxists. Uh, India was much more to the left than it is today. Now it's, <laughs> it's very right wing uh, run by a fascist. But, the, you know, that's that's the topic. You know, isn't that interesting? That's what we end up with when our political system is captured, because from the last conversation, you know, talking about not having en- enough working class people or not having yeah. uh, the populace really represented in politics at all. You, you end up with fascism. Uh, we, you end up with 19th century elitist, neoliberal uh, kinds of politics and uh, the working class is ignored, they starve, they live uh, horrible lives. And that's not democratic by its very nature. Of no, course, it's undemocratic. So anyway, I, yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for that, John. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. Mark, I mean, I think there was something to yeah. learn here with Omar. Um, and, and I think that uh, is, is an area for Sawant to study because, you know, I mean, Omar, very progressive, you know, to the left of Keith Ellison, who, you know, was a progressive champion, big friend of, uh, of Bernie Sanders, still is. And, you know, and our revolution, is, et cetera. I, I just think that it needs to be, she needs to understand if she's going to go on a national level, um, that she's going to have to figure out a way to construct a, a communication style that is not, you know, throw a bunch of fastballs at the guy's head uh, I don't know if that's going to move a lot of people. You know, it's possible, Jeff, that she actually did reach out and got burned by the Democrats, and they just told her that we're not going to Could support be. you if you run for governor or mayor, and this is her response. But also, Could be. you know, we have we also have this issue of um, of being a city council member for multiple terms here, never quite being able to get rent control or a lot of the issues that she wanted. Uh, through the city council. So, um, you know, I don't know what's happened within the last few months or something with her. I don't have that inside story. I actually haven't spoken to her recently, but I I do plan to testify on Monday before the city council on Initiative 135, the social housing uh, initiative, which I know that she backs and, and she's been a major proponent of. So I'm not sure. She's also an educator. We have to remember she has a PhD in economics and was teaching at Seattle Central College. So she may just wanna go back to academia and she may think that she has more influence over young people by being there, I don't know. By the way, I have to. I have a question for you, Jeff, but I do wanna say that it is a great loss um, to, yes. to, you know, to see David Crosby um, pass on. His music has really influenced me in a, on multiple generations of people. I wish that more musicians were more activist oriented and were more from the heart and spoke the truth about what's happening in this country because we do have a problem with fascism. I mean, I responded to Harvey K the other day on Twitter saying, you know, a description of some of the Republicans in the House of Representatives, I called them uh, belligerent, bellicose blunderers and devious, dangerous demagogues. And that's kind of what, what we have today. But my, my question for you, Jeff, I know it's kind of off the subject, but I've been wondering for weeks now, is that a racer X bobblehead there on the shelf behind you? What is that? That I'm is. Very, you are a serious. smart man. From that racer. is a racer X. My buddy would speed racer. Of course, the uh, the great uh, TV show from the seventies, late sixties, and that's exactly what it is. I'm gonna try to 
see if I can bring. I've it out never here seen on the other one. Side. I didn't even know that they were available. Uh, oh, yes. by and there you go. Oh, cool. yeah, I want one. Where can I get one of those? That's cool. You know, speed racing. I have no cool idea thing. where I get this. So, yes, he is I have the man. To show you too. Um, this you is know, you know, the background. What... He's actually Speed Race's brother. That's the whole thing. Oh, that's right. We weren't supposed to know that in, the, in the, those first few episodes. But I also have something to show you. I don't know if you can see it, but this is an example of what happens when you go to Climate, climate Pledge. Field to see the Kraken, which won nice. yesterday. See the okay. Kraken. So what this means is that when you go to the Climate Pledge Arena, there is no for, there is no one-time use plastic anything there. There is nothing that is immediately disposable. And that's part of this idea of trying to create a more sustainable kind of sports culture. So they give you this cup. If you buy a pop or a beer, they give you the cup and then you can use it, you know, for as much as, you know, for the rest of your life or whatever. That's great. Which I think is really cool. It's a it's a good example of how things can change. And, and one of the things I'm very proud of that the Kraken and, and uh, the Climate Pledge Field Arena or Climate Pledge Arena people are pushing. So. It's a good example for Hey, the let me ask country. you, have any of the NHL players, because they have been, uh, of all the sports leagues, very much focused on climate change. I remember the former Bruin, Andrew Ferentz, uh, was on my show years ago talking about that, and there are others too. Some are retired now. But um, have any of the players come out and talk about this issue? Have the uh, PR people of the Kraken, you know, at all put them out to, uh, to talk about this? Because athletes, you know, um, and again, they're only an hour and a half from the Canadian border where a lot of these players uh, grew up. You know, there's a lot of, there's a ton of players who grew up in British Columbia as an example. So, I mean, it's not like they're, you know, they're without friends that could be influenced, um, you know, in the Western part of Canada. So, and of course, progressive Seattle, I mean, it makes perfect sense. I hope they do because it would make sense, you know, to promote their team, which has been really, really good this year. Uh, again, they beat my Bruins, broke their unbeaten streak at home. Um, but I think, and they'll probably make the playoffs um, on top of that, yeah, which is amazing great. in your right second now. year. So, I mean, they, yeah. they, they understand they understand how to play the game, and uh, I would hope that their athletes get engaged. You know, they don't have to do it every day, but, you know, I mean, why not? And, you know, if they're if they're out smart enough to, you know, hand out those cups, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's an important thing to recycle. Um, one more thing on well, Crosby. I I, I hope that people, Democrats, I hope that. Oh, I was just going to say, it's the uh, Democrat, the Democrats in Italy used to say, uh, Semper Avanti, always ahead, right? We need to push the envelope on all of these issues. And if the Kraken can do it with their players, then I totally support that. Yeah, no, I agree with you. All right. Uh, and, you know, and, and, and you should definitely have some pasta tonight. Uh, that'd be a good thing. Celebrate our friends in Italy. Um, but um, <laughs> I think. I think that Crosby, in my view, um, should be, I don't know if you want to call it memorialized, but, you know, we should honor somebody like him because maybe it's somebody like Vetter, uh, you know, you know, our, our friends at U2, you know, maybe Springsteen, but somebody who understands the power of music and how it influences society and politics. And we shouldn't just let that go. And if I'm not mistaken, he had something to say, uh, along with his colleague, uh, another great Canadian, um, um, you know, from uh, Mr. Young, about uh, what happened with Rogan. So that's another example. I only got 15 seconds, but your quick thoughts. Uh, all I can say is David Crosby was not a perfect person, but he's got a good example as a musician for folks like me. So thank you, David, wherever you're at. We love you. And... As I said, thank you, I'm Mark. Keep it moving forward. And All the best. Check out my music. Let's keep moving Spotify. forward. We'll talk to you next week, my friend. We'll see you on Thanks, YouTube. Jeff. I want to thank uh, good friend Josh for producing this broadcast, Freddie Santori. Of course, our guest, MTC, and Mr. Shelton. Keep on fighting, folks. Have a great weekend. My name is Jeff Santos, and right now it's my time to say I gotta go.